previously on Ron's sailing. We stayed on the northern tip of Öland and enjoyed the nice weather. Then we continued east to Sweden's largest island, Gotland, where the main city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Tuesday morning and me and Vera <coughs> are doing uh, some laundry today. Malin is on the boat working on some videos so I thought I'd take the opportunity to do some washing. Two dollars per machine so pretty reasonable price and this marina here in Visby is quite expensive to be in Sweden. It's uh, I think we pay 425 Swedish kroners per day so that's around 44 US dollars. But it's a very nice marina and the only problem is that it's pretty exposed from winds from the southwest. And tomorrow the wind is going to pick up quite a lot, up to gusting to 40 knots uh, from the southwest. So if we're unlucky, there is going to be a lot of surge uh, and swell into the harbor. Should we go for a walk while we wait? Huh? Let's do that. Yeah, the wind is coming now, and <laughs> now the rain also started. Yeah, we will move spot now before it gets worse. Yeah, this is what it's like to live on a boat. You have to suddenly change your plans and move your boat so it's safe but also so it's comfortable okay yeah we have to move <laughs> this spot is going to be really bad in a few hours so we're going to move over there and probably or hopefully there's more uh, leaf from the sea in there and they're going to help us one guy from the marina is going to be on the boat and uh, one on the dock so really nice of course The distance from the dock to the stern mooring buoy was too short for the boat, which meant we had to use our milk cleats instead. It was great to get help with moving the boat, since I was carrying a sleeping Vera. We attached the shock absorbers again, to make it more comfortable aboard, now when the high winds were coming. Today we're gonna go and explore Gotland. It's raining at the moment, but it should stop at noon. So I hope the weather forecast is accurate. We have a car that's waiting for us up here. In the harbor you can rent old cars, like all the Skodas and uh, <laughs> yeah, they have some quite funny explanations on their website. But it's so cheap um, compared to like the big uh, car rental brands. So it was like uh, 45 euros for a day. So yeah, this is our uh, stuff for just being out for one day. <laughs> Some garbage too. Some snacks, food for Vera, uh, other clothes, and if it's warm, we can go swimming, and camera gear. So I think we have everything. Since it was raining, we started by going to all DIY people's favorite store, Biltema. towards the northern part of the island now, Fogasun, where we will take the ferry to the little island just north of uh, Gotland called Fogasun. Uh, 
this is the island where our famous world known um, director, movie director Ingmar Bergman used to live in. Fora is also the island where they have some of the nicest beaches on all Gotland and uh, really soft sandy beaches and a lot of um, beaches with uh, Rauka, these uh, stone formations that are very special for Gotland. So we're on the car ferry and this is actually a part of the public road network so it's free. Fjöre has a fantastic nature, and its mostly barren landscape gives the island a very special beauty. We're in a really old little fishing place, and you can really notice the, and smell the tar that they put on the boat. It's really pretty around here. Some small fishing huts. They have their tools and it's raining quite a lot though. <laughs> no sun yet. There's only around 500 people living here year around, but this number multiplies during summer and it's easy to understand why. So we're on the northern tip of Fora now, Langhammas Nature Reserve. And here are some really big and tall uh, stone formations, Rauka. Pretty tall. I think it's around eight, eight, nine meters. This used to be a, a coral reef, like 400 million years ago, in a tropical sea. And after the ice age, this whole land came back up again. So the waves could come in here and crash against these rocks. And over time, uh, the water dug away the softer parts, the, the limestone, and left the remnants of the corals, which is the, the stone formations we see here. It's really astonishing what nature can do if, it's, if you just give it time. This rauk is called the Langhamas man because of its man-like profile. So do you recognize this Malin? Oh, so fine. Coral. Yeah. Looks pretty similar to the ones we saw in the Caribbean, right? Yeah. There are so many fossils here. You can find uh, old coral printings like this in so many of the stones on the beach. I wonder how old it is. What's your guess? Yeah, somewhere between four and six hundred million years old. Something yes. like that. So like, pretty old. <laughs> yeah, it's like hard to understand, hard to imagine. Yeah. Unreal. Vera loved crawling in the sand and ate maybe one or hundreds of grains. Blueweed covers the ground, and sheep are walking almost everywhere on the island. This is such a beautiful place.
it's incredible how much dust these uh, belts for the engine produces. And it's time to clean the engine compartment today uh, because it's starting to be quite a lot of dust now. And I will also put some belt dressing on the belts and see if that will help uh, so it doesn't produce as much dust in the future. But I'm not sure because on the old boat we used to have these uh, V-belts for the engine and they produce uh, even more dust than these. So these belts are a lot better but still there are some dust. And I will also tension, give it this. Det var lagstad. Nej. I kjølsvinnet. Yeah. <laughs> First obstacle, I dropped the flashlight. Uh, it's quite far down there. In the bilge. <laughs> yes. It's still working, but... So this belt is a bit loose. This is for the 24 volt alternator. And it's a quite big alternator. It's on 80 amps. So if you compare that to a 12 volt, it's, it's the same wattage as a 160 amp uh, 12 volt alternator. So of course, when you use like the bow thruster and stuff like that, there's a lot of force going into this belt. So it's really important that you have the correct tension. Otherwise, that will also produce a lot of dust. To control the tension on these belts, you, you, I mean, you should be able to press it down around 10 millimeters. And as you can see here, this is a lot more, maybe 15 to 20 millimeters. You don't want to put too much tension on these belts either, because then the belt could break. But also that you put too much strain on the bearings in the alternator and, the, and on the water pump. So it should be just right. And I think this is pretty close. Stiff, but not too stiff. You have an assistant. Yeah. The main reason to keep it clean and tidy in the engine compartment is not uh, for the looks of it. It's uh, because it makes it a lot easier to see if there's an uh, upcoming problem, a leak or anything like that. So that's why I like to keep it nice and tidy in here. Is the engine okay? How's the batteries? Are they doing all right? Need some more water in there? Have you checked the oil on the engine? Huh? So now I think the engine looks pretty clean and the last thing I will do now is to put on some belt dressing this prevents the belts from uh, drying and cracking and it also prevents uh, slipping because it's a bit sticky. Obstacle number two. Uh, we run out of uh, propane. <laughs> but we have another bottle where we have to switch the, the hose. So, um, a break in the cooking right now. Now we have propane again. And frying the halloumi in a little bit of olive oil. We have two uh, six kilo bottles on board. And the one that we've used now, that was got empty, we've had for like six to seven weeks. Many boats had gathered in the marina to seek shelter from the strong winds. And some looked like they had quite a rough sail. We 
have gusts of 40 knots right now. Thursday first is gonna calm down. Then it's, all this has blown over. Today is Sunday. So today we've been here a week. <laughs> Not what we planned, but uh, yeah, we can't rule over the weather. I'm happy to stay here. Visby is such a great town. There's so much to see and it's just nice taking walks. There are parks and you can walk by the water and in the city. So it's a nice place to be stuck at. To get off the boat a little, we drove to a place that almost looked like the Caribbean. This is an old limestone uh, quarry. It's called the Blue Lagoon. And the reason for the color is, of course, that the bottom is uh, white from the limestone. Pretty tropical place for being here. Looks really inviting to dive in, but I guess it's pretty cold. This was clearly a very popular place. So these church ruins are uh, close to 1,000 years old and even before Christianity this used to be a cult place because they have found uh, rune stones and stuff like that under these churches when they have been doing digs. Now we're sitting inside the church, the old church ruin, because here it's a cafe and they have this as their uh, like garden where you can sit and have a fika. Hey! Is she sleeping? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we have like found a secret spot. There's nobody here. <laughs> no. It's just us. The tourists, they, the other tourists, they don't, maybe they don't come up here. It's too much walking. The view from here is so beautiful. Visby has 2,700 residents within the city walls. And on the whole island, there are 65,000 people living. But during a normal summer, Gotland gets around 1 million visitors. Uh, today is another day of typical Swedish summer weather. Rain and uh, quite a lot of wind today as well. But tomorrow it looks a lot better, so we will leave uh, around noon and sail the 50 nautical miles to the mainland. Uh, to a really nice anchorage there. Hard to believe it's July. But stay tuned for next week's episode where we drop the anchor in a new archipelago. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more of us, join our Patreon crew and get access to live chats and our Patreon community. See you next week!